you set out on a ship captained by the pirate named Ahab, who is missing a leg and very much wants to kill the whale, which is named Moby Dick and which is white. Go to church and later set out on a ship captained by a pirate named Ahab who is missing a leg and very much wants to kill the whale, which is named Moby Dick and which is what. In the course of the book. In the 2022 Darren Aronofsky drama The Whale, morbidly obese English teacher Charlie lives the life of a recluse. His only meaningful social contact comes through his relationships with his nurse and closest friend Liz, his estranged teenage daughter Ellie and a visiting pastor from the New Life Church, Thomas, who believes that Charlie can be saved through religious faith. Ashamed of his physical and emotional condition, Charlie hides from the world, concealing his appearance from his pizza delivery man, Dan, who unknowingly feeds his addiction, and from the students in his online English class, whom he teaches with his webcam disabled. As Charlie attempts unsuccessfully to reconnect with his daughter through assisting her with a school essay, we learn that he is a homosexual, and that the source of his despair is the suicide of his late boyfriend Alan, who Charlie abandoned his family to be with, and who later killed himself because of religious guilt. The grief of this loss is the cause of Charlie's self-destructive eating habits, which are now slowly killing him. With his mental and physical health deteriorating, Charlie sends a profanity-laden email to his students, telling them to disregard their coursework and to simply write something honest. During his next class, Charlie reveals that he has been fired and having nothing to lose, turns on his webcam for the first time, to the shock of his students. Nearing death, Charlie makes one final effort to reconcile with his daughter, asking her to read an 8th grade essay she had wrote on the story Moby Dick, which, he tells her, was the most honest thing he had ever read. While she reads the essay, Charlie rises from his chair and struggles to walk towards her. When they finally stand face to face, they both smile as he is engulfed in white light. The symbolic subtext of the film is hardly subtle. Charlie is an attempted metaphor for modern Western man, a personification of consumerism, overfed, impotent, and dying from his own guilt and decadence. He is tended by his Asian nurse and fed by his Indian pizza delivery boy, social commentary implying that the white man is dependent upon non-whites. This racial subtext is made apparent through the recurring references to Moby Dick, who, we are explicitly and repeatedly reminded, is white. Charlie is a martyr for the cause of white ethno-suicide, annihilating himself in search of spiritual liberation, to the dismay of Pastor Thomas, an obvious allusion to the Bible's doubting Thomas. The goal of this story is to coerce its intended audience, white westerners, into believing that we are terminally ill and can only find deliverance in death. The underlying metaphor is transparent enough that it need not serve as the central focus of this video. Instead, I intend primarily to discuss the film's lead actor, Brendan Fraser, and the true significance of his popular resurgence. Fraser is a Canadian-American actor who first rose to prominence as a Hollywood leading man in the 1990s. Excelling equally in comedic and dramatic roles, he would gain major commercial success in the 1999 fantasy epic The Mummy, and would garner critical acclaim for his performance in 1998's Gods and Monsters. However, after a series of box office bombs and personal troubles, Fraser would find his career in rapid decline, and by the 2010s he had sunk into near obscurity, leading many people to ask, whatever happened to Brendan Fraser? This would all change with his starring role in The Whale, which has seemingly revitalized his fading career. Overnight and seemingly out of the blue, Brendan would once again rise to the forefront of the entertainment world, ostensibly on the strength of this comeback performance. His part in the film has garnered critical acclaim and, after its debut screening at the Venice Film Festival, he was given a six-minute standing ovation from the attending crowd. At the 95th Academy Awards, Brendan would win the Oscar for Best Actor, becoming the first Canadian to be awarded this prestigious accolade. 
The strength of this unexpected career resurgence has led to it being dubbed Brendan Fraser's redemption arc, and it has been framed as an inspirational triumph against the odds. But Brendan Fraser's comeback is not an organic development, and he is not being rewarded for mastery in his craft. Instead, Brendan is being rewarded for his contribution to the degradation of Western culture and society, and for his participation, as a famous white man, in a public act of ritualized self-debasement. The artificial acclaim being afforded to him at present is designed to lend prestige to this debasement and the anti-white ideology it serves. Put simply, the whale and Brendan's uncanny embodiment of its degenerate protagonist is a propaganda piece designed to induce demoralization through bringing into question the norms and standards upon which our society was historically built. More, it attempts to foster sympathy for those who violate these norms, weaponizing the empathy of its audience to coerce them into accepting that which both their reason and their instincts tell them should never be accepted. The goal of this act of subversion is to lead us, and our society as a whole, into becoming the whale's tragic protagonist ourselves, and manifesting the same self-destructive behaviors that ultimately killed him. This, its creators have correctly reasoned, will likewise kill us. In other words, Fraser's on-screen transformation from clean-cut, confident hero to feeble, sickly degenerate is the very transformation that Darren Aronofsky seeks to effect in us and our culture, both literally and metaphorically. This is why Brendan Fraser has been showered with the acclaim and accolades that had until now eluded him. The culture controllers, understanding well the imitative nature of the human animal, know that we seek to emulate those behaviours which we believe will win us the approval and adoration of our peers. By utilising their control of cultural institutions to reward acts of shame and degradation, they manipulate the targeted audience into unproductive behaviours that lead inevitably to sickness, despair and death, promising that in this death we will, like the whale's tragic protagonist, find peace. These stories of white sickness and self-destruction are called profound by critics, they win awards, accolades, and worldly success of all kinds for their creators. And after these tales have won their acclaim, they enter into the canon of popular culture and from there pass into myth, where they serve to shape the minds of future generations, ensuring that our descendants will inherit the same sickness carried therein. And this is the true meaning of Brendan Fraser's so-called redemption arc. It is not a redemption, but a tragic fall framed as one. And in this, it provides great insight into our modern world. For had he not debased himself as the whale, Fraser would remain in obscurity. He would never have been rewarded in strength or dignity, and he would never have won acclaim as a white man with pride and self-respect. There would be no accolades had he given his audience a positive role model to emulate. Being white, he could only ever be rewarded in shame, despair, and brokenness. The whale's Charlie is everything Hollywood wants white men to be, and his fate is the fate they wish upon us. Brendan Fraser's story is, therefore, a microcosm of our society as a whole, revealing the hidden means by which it operates, through punishing every display of strength and life in order to suppress it, and rewarding every manifestation of sickness and decay in order to foster it. Fraser's participation in this cultural humiliation ritual was, knowingly or not, his offering to the culture controllers, a public act of allegiance to their goals. He has allowed himself to be used as a vector for cultural entropy, so that we would learn to reach inside ourselves and find the weakness within, finally coming to see our self-destruction and death as tragically beautiful, even heroic. The Wales creator Darren Aronofsky, though professing to hold up a mirror to our society, actually seeks to induce the very decay he pretends to compassionately depict. The Whale is not a profound study of the human condition, nor is it some tragic meditation on pain and loss. It is simply propaganda designed only to weaken and corrupt. And far from being inspirational, Brendan Fraser's redemption arc is a tragic cautionary tale, the story of a man who sold his dignity for the acclaim and approval of those who hate him.